Hello everybody, this is Old Soldier. Today we're going to talk about rucksacks and backpacks. My wife has often asked me, how many packs do you have? Well, apparently the answer is 10. Um, I'd like to tell you that uh, I first started using and buying rucksacks recreationally and just on the weekends, and then it got to be more of an issue, but that's not the case. So in almost uh, 40 years of use, both in the military, outside the military, professionally outside the military, and recreational and hunting, um, these are my experiences and opinions on various rucksacks, uh, different styles and categories, from light day packs to uh, heavy-duty, all-purpose, well, heavy-duty tactical rucksacks, and some medium-sized rucks as well. So uh, let's begin. First up is a large Alice rucksack. Alice stands for All-Purpose Lightweight Individual Carrying Equipment developed by the Army in the 1960 uh, in conjunction with load-bearing equipment or web gear. Um, I have by far the most experience with this and have used them the most. When I entered the military in the 1980s, this was issued. I carried them throughout my military career at different points or for a large portion of it and through a number of service schools. Uh, for what they are, not bad at all. Uh, if you've talked to anybody who served in the infantry, in either the Army or the Marine Corps, they're very familiar with these. And for really, for the price point and what they do, not ideal, but not bad. They are made of uh, lightweight nylon and have an external frame. Uh, here you can see the external frame, the shoulder straps, which are aftermarket and the back or hip pad and the belt. So any rucksack, uh, you have to distribute the weight between your shoulders and your hips with the majority of it, the vast majority of it, let's say 70% on the hips. If it has most on your shoulders, you're, you're eventually, or a heavy rucksack, it's, it's gonna, you're gonna blow your back out. Um, this particular rucksack, I've owned several, I've been issued, Numerous ones that have been turned back into the central issuing facility or whatever school I was attending if I needed them. Um, this one is bought aftermarket. I believe I bought it from Sportsman's Guide. Uh, and the, uh, the shoulder straps, these camouflage things are aftermarket. I don't know. Maybe they started issuing them later on the military after I uh, departed, but I think they're aftermarket. When you're packing weight in a rucksack, any rucksack or backpack, the heaviest items should be high up on your back and centered. Uh, the Alice Pack comes with a radio pouch that's meant to contain uh, military radios, but your other heavier items, they can be placed in here and cinched down through the adjustable uh, tension cord or strap so that it remains secure and high up on your back. The last thing that you want with any pack is to have a lot of weight low and loose flopping around. On the rear exterior of the rucksack, there are three magazine pouches which are made, in theory, to hold loaded magazines. There are also three exterior cargo pouches which are useful into uh, putting items you might need at a moment's notice, or not a moment's notice, but quickly rather than digging in your main rucksack pouch, like a quick meal of MREs or maybe LERPs, or maybe a poncho, or maybe some snivel gear, which is cold weather gear or uh, things to protect you from the elements. Um, in reality, I very seldom ever saw magazines. Well, I shouldn't say that. I did see magazines put in there, but many other, other items can be carried in these all outside. Uh, like I said, I bought this. This was not mine. This is military surplus. But you can see at the top that they have uh, luminescent tape sewed on to this one. And whoever had this rucksack, uh, there's probably a unit spe uh, standard operating procedure, or SOP, and that's how they identified their rucksacks. Um, I'm guessing by this one, and this could be wrong, it's just a guess, that this is Charlie Company, and with the three dots, I'm guessing it's Sir Platoon. But I could be wrong on that. So there's many different ways of the military. Uh, if you have 20 of these, or 30 of these, or 100 of these, one rucksack looks like just another rucksack. So it is important uh, to mark it in some way that you can pick it out as, as yours. So a lot of people put name tapes on it. This particular one does not have it. It looks like at one point there was one sewn on and maybe it got cut off. But uh, uh, that's 
was a common practice. Not everybody did it, or every unit, or everybody, but a lot of people did. Large Alice packs are capable of bearing heavy loads well in excess of 100 pounds. I deployed on both training missions and real world missions, although not wartime missions, uh, many times with extremely heavy rucksacks. For granted that they are 1960s technology and there's a lot better things out there, uh, they are still a very good rucksack for what they are. If you're the person that needs the newest, most high speed, uh, lightweight rucksack, this isn't it. If you're the person who's looking for an economical solution, that'll work. There's a lot of them on the market. There's very affordable. There's all kinds of spare parts in case the strap breaks. Uh, this might be for you. I used Alice packs extensively when I was in the military. I jumped them many times on airborne or static line airborne operations. Uh, myself and about a million other people in the military use them a great deal. For what they are, they're a pretty good rucksack. Next up is the Low Alpine Vector System. This particular model is the LCS-84, although almost nobody referred to them as that. As you can tell, this one is worn, and this was my rucksack that I carried for years in the military. So in the military, you're bound by what is unit SOP, what is regulation, and what is issued. However, in certain units, special forces, army special forces, you're given some latitude. Uh, they also have special buys, and you have more, more latitude with, with what you can use for field gear, or at least it used to be in the past. I'd be very surprised if that's not the case in at least uh, some units today. Uh, this particular one I bought in the late 80s, and uh, it is one of those pieces of gear which uh, it's something that's called the team room system, or the, the, pardon me, not the team room system, but the team room theory, and that you can take a piece of gear, drop it in a 12-man, or a team room for a 12-man uh, Special Forces A team, and six of the people on the team will say it's the best thing ever, and six of the people will say it's a, a piece of junk. So that was pretty much my experience with this. Some people absolutely hated them. Some people loved them. Personally, I liked it. It has a number of features, and on my body frame, it worked very well. Now, uh, this has an internal frame rather than an external frame, and let's talk a little bit about that. Here you can see part of the internal frame. You can see the steel strappings there and there. Um, I believe... Lowe called this the parallel or the parallax uh, internal suspension system, uh, internal frame system. For me, it worked very well. Some people absolutely hated it. You can see it has a nice, generous padded hip pad. And what I especially liked is for some reason, although they look very similar, I thought the shoulder straps were much more comfortable. One of the things that I really liked about this rucksack was... At the bottom, it had a special zippered compartment for your sleeping bag or sleeping items. What is important about this, especially in the military, is in your rucksack, you carry a lot of mission essential gear. Radios, ammunition, night vision, and other items. They're in your main compartment. When it comes time to, that uh, you want to rack out, you don't want to have to take absolutely everything out of your rucksack or move it so you can get to your sleeping gear at the bottom of your rucksack. With this compartment, it's separated. You can simply unzip it and get to your sleeping gear or your sleeping bag. You can see on the outside of the ruck, I have attached a two-quart bladder canteen. Um, as much as possible, when I carried uh, extra water, which is frequently or carry two quarts of extra water as much as possible. I would drink from the bladder canteen and keep my uh, two canteens full on my load bearing equipment or my assault vest. Uh, this was in case it was just a good way to train or even real world or train for real world. Um, in case for some reason you had to leave your rucksack, you still have you know two quarts of water. And really, it's just a good practice to get into. 
The low pack has its exterior cargo pouches on the side rather than the back of the rucksack. On one side it has two smaller pouches. And on the opposite side it has just a single larger pouch. Also, they had the cargo parts pockets were modified so skis could be put in on either side of the rucksack pouches or the cargo pouches. So in other words, there was a compartment in here this would go all the way through and you could carry skis if you're doing winter uh, operations. And I've used them in that capacity on more than one occasion. One of the at the time revolutionary or new features of the low rucksack was that it had a, det a detachable top flap or map flap that could be used as a lightweight rucksack. It came with a pair of shoulder straps or it could be used to detach from the main rucksack and be used as a survival E&E kit. Um, at the time that was new, I suspect as right now that's um, dated technology, but at the time it was uh, a nice feature. The low is also capable of carrying extremely heavy loads, well in excess of 100 pounds, and can be rigged to for static line airborne operations. Uh, I'm not a halo guy, so I don't know, but I would guess that they can be rigged for that. Uh, I jumped them many times on static line operations. Uh, I should note that the military tried to copy this model of the low. And I think they also designated the LCS-84, and those were a dismal failure. The quality control apparently was terrible. I never carried one, but I talked to many people who did, and they did not like them. They had a lot of problems with wear and the stitching. Uh, the stitching on the low vector is heavy duty, and the material is heavy duty. And that is another complaint that I heard from people, is that the rucksack itself, empty, is very heavy. Hey, personally, I liked it. Many of the people who had them that I talked to liked it, but there's probably about an equal number of people that I knew in Special Forces that uh, were issued with these or one of their variants and loathed, loathed the things. Personally, I liked mine and got good, ser good service from it. One of the complaints that I heard is when they ran with it, it uh, swung from side to side. Uh, to me, it... Uh, conform better to my back and I just did not have that experiment. So although uh, I'd have to say the low Alpine Vector LCS-84 is like me. Dated but still serviceable. Next up is the Kelty medium sized day pack. Uh, I bought this in the mid 1990. I wanted something more low profile for civilian hiking and there are applications for having civilian gear in different type of uh, military operations and I wanted something that would not stand out and possibly identify you um, as a military service member and this was my choice. This has given me good surface, pardon me, this has given me good service but uh, it's about worn out. It didn't, well, for what it's seen it has worn extremely well but uh, it's just coming to the end of its service life. I've had to have one of the shoulder straps reattached. If you look here, this is the shoulder strap that it tore and I had to have re, uh, reattached. This is the original one. You can tell that the sewing is a little bit differently. But it tore completely off and uh, one of my SF buddies who has a sewing machine and does his own alterations uh, sewed it back up for me. I should point out this, this was after 20 years of fairly, uh, I wouldn't say heavy use, but regular use. This is the only Kelty pack that I've ever owned, and I've been impressed with the quality. It has one main compartment and three exterior compartments. Two zippered pouches on either side. And a zippered compartment that's mesh, which is handy if you have wet items and you want to put them in there to dry. It has, like I said, this is a medium sized ruck and it has a fairly spacious uh, main compartment but it's, it's not in the same category for size or weight carrying capacity 
as either the low or the Alice. Next up is a light or small backpack made by Eagle Industries, which they market or used to market as a three-day assault pack. Myself, I was a big fan of Eagle Industries gear um, when they were located in the United States. They have since changed hand. They've moved production to off offshore. I, I don't know if the stitching is any better or worse. I just don't know. But when these items were made in the United States, the stitching was superior and they held up very well. Uh, this pack is probably about 25 years old. As you can see, it's uh, worn and has seen a lot of use. I've used this for everything from hunting to tactical work to just day-to-day -day use. Uh, I think there's still mud on it from the last time I was down in, in Texas hunting pigs. This is a lightweight pack and as I said it's seen expensive, extensive use but the stitching is still good. Um, these come with a provision for a uh, hydration bladder that's the entrance for the hose if I could find the darn thing there's the Eagle Industries logo uh, I've also attached a separate container made by Maxpedition that holds a Nalgene bottle I don't know if you can see that Sorry. That's the container that, uh, the pouch that holds the Nalgene bottle that I keep on there. Uh, bought before the concept of moly webbing is, or molly webbing, uh, came into play. As you can see, there's none on there. Uh, has one main pocket, the hydration bladder pocket, and two smaller zippered exterior pockets. Once again, zippers often on poorly sewn items. They often give out easily. This is seen hard use. Those zippers are hanging in there. Those are the original zippers. Uh, just a great piece of gear and is giving me great use. Uh, there's many knockoffs of this style. One of the things that I will say is the on, on any backpack, it's the stitching and the quality of the materials. Because everything looks good in the store. You load it up, carry things around. Uh, the stitching starts to go and they fail. This thing has just hung in there and never had a rip, never had a tear. Lightweight backpack, good for just day trip, but uh, comfortable to wear. I have had a number of my uh, people that I've worked with, both in and out of the military, say that uh, Eagle items did not fit their bodies especially well. Uh, especially with this item, I've had no such problems. So, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, this is another Eagle Industries product. This is the Becker Patrol Pack. They made a couple different versions of it. This is the larger version. Uh, because I have the three-day assault pack, I like that for smaller things. Uh, this thing in the late 90s up until the early 2000s was the hotness. hotness. So this is basically, um, I can't remember his first name, but Mr. Becker and Eagle Industries produced it, their take on how they would produce uh, an Alice pack and make it more useful, economical, or pardon me, not economical, ergonomic. So uh, this thing was, like I said, the larger version of the two. It has two magazine pouches on the top flap, the mat flap. And you can see here, there's the mat flap. There's some things that I have here. Uh, apparently a container of a heat tab that I had in there. And then also, it has four exterior cargo pouches, kind of two on the side and two in the middle. Uh, has a very large, roomy main compartment and does not have a uh, radio pouch. Shoulder straps were cool. They had uh, suede on them, so you could get the purchase of a weapon on either arm, or to purchase the buttstock of a weapon. It had uh, cool max on the back. There's no external or internal frame on this thing, and it does have a recovery or drag strap on it, sewn right in. 
Uh, it also, one other nice feature that it has, pretty comfortable uh, waistband, and it can be detached and used as a war belt, or you can attach things to it. It does have some molly webbing on it, not a great deal, some. And, uh, you know, really just a neat piece of gear. Uh, the one thing I will say about it, I just have not used this that much. So this is kind of like a step down from an ultra heavy duty. I don't know if I'd pack a real large uh, gear weight or load of gear in this thing. Never jumped it. Uh, used on it different things. The things that I did use it on, it worked extremely well. So I liked it. Um, I don't believe these are in production anymore. You will find them on eBay and other places for about 200 bucks and I don't know I think of the prime over 20 years ago I paid 140 150 for it maybe but I thought they're an excellent piece of gear if uh, I, I know some of my colleagues some of my uh, buddies in SF used them I have one friend who deployed several times during the war and he basically wore one out and he wore it out because you know not because it was poorly constructed because he used it a lot so uh, if you have any other comments on this particular one, on, on these or any of the rucksacks, I'd love to see them in the comment section. This is Black Hawk's version of the three-day assault pack. You could say that in a lot of respects, it is very similar to the Eagle Industries three-day assault pack. Uh, this does have some features that I do like. As you know, this is a later manufacturer, and they do have uh, Molly Web, and if you do want to attach some things. This is a little bit larger than the uh, uh, Eagle version. Uh, it also, uh, one of the things that I do like is that it comes, it, this one came with a hydration bladder in it that has stood up pretty well. And one of the things that I do like, it has sleeves on the shoulder straps that uh, incorporate, you can put it on your non-firing shoulder uh, so the hydration bladder uh, is out of the way and yet stays with the shoulder straps. Um, it also has, one of the things I do like about it as well, is it has this uh, portion on your back. It really doesn't have a, I don't think this quite qualifies as a full frame, but I would call it a semi-rigid frame. And it does do a good job of keeping um, your back cooler. Uh, I have not used this nearly as much as I used the Eagle Energies version, partially because uh, when I had two of them, I decided to dedicate this one as uh, my go bag and this is what I've stored stuff in and it has made a few trips it's made a number of trips to my vehicle it's made uh, actually a fair amount on my back but just not, well a fair amount but not nearly in comparison to uh, my uh, green eagle pack not nearly as many uh, one thing I will say this is just a benefit of my experience and some others that I have talked to is that the uh, the Blackhawk products, their stitching just is not quite as good as the Eagle. And that is my opinion, okay? That is my opinion and also the opinion I've shared with some of my colleagues in the military and, and other organizations as well. But uh, overall, you know, I th still think these you can, they make these things, they market these things, they sell these things. I think 130, 140, somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, not bad. I still use it. I'm thinking about possibly changing my go bag to another platform. But, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, I've used this, had this one for about 15 years. And, you know, I can talk about the stitching not standing up. But as you can see, the stitching on this particular one has, it's hung in there pretty well. So, overall, I have to say, not bad. Uh, next up is the Everly Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation uh, pack. Uh, so some of you are watching these reviews and you're thinking, hey, old soldier, this is all great and this is all good, but when are you going to jump into the 21st century? Okay, here I am. So I, after a couple of years, number of years, uh, elk hunting in the Rockies, I wanted, I, I tried several things and nothing really worked great. So I decided to buy a dedicated uh, hunting elk big game hunting pack and I went with the uh, Everly stock and I have been 
super happy with it. Love, love, love this backpack. Uh, this has an a, uh, external, or pardon me, internal frame that can also be used as a pack frame to pack out quarters of elk, and I've used it as such. And does it work as well as a dedicated pack frame? No, but you can hunt with this, and um, you don't have to make another trip back down to your vehicle to grab a pack frame and make it come back up. So uh, I'm going to go over some of the features. Uh, as you can tell, it has uh, quite a bit of molly on it. Um, on the top, I uh, don't haven't really used it so much. On each side, it has internal pockets. And I've broken that particular holder. This thing I've had, I think, for six or seven years. Um, used it on three occasions to pack out up quarters. On this side, my non-firing side, I do have a hydration bladder, and there's a hanger in here that uh, you use it to hang up the uh, hydration bladder. They're found on both sides. Love the construction their material was constructed with. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, on the Kelty backpack, uh, there you can see the there you can see the, the Team Elk logo. I, I didn't buy it because of that, but it is pretty ideal for elk hunting. Uh, it has a top flap, mat flap, and that you can still see I have it set up for. I have a skinny knife and some gloves. I think I have some masks and other things. Uh, here you can see where I've done some damage to it that I probably need to repair. But I love the material because uh, it's a softer cloth material and it is much quieter if it brushes up against vegetation. It just does not uh, make the noise. It doesn't make the loud noise. It, it muffles it. And elk really are ghosts of the woods. Not that I'm an expert elk hunter. I have been fortunate enough to uh, shoot a few. And, uh, you know, they, they really are the ghosts of the woods. But everything you can have that put in your favor. There's an exterior pocket outside the main compartment we used to uh, store things, small items you need quickly. Uh, there's also a uh, zipper portion to it as well. Um, see the frame? Very comfortable. Uh, belt system. And it has two small pockets on the side. Nice padding on the back. It's adjustable. Uh, you know, although they're not heavily padded, they're wide, and they're very comfortable. I thought a couple times, maybe, about adding a little padding, but then I decided to leave it alone. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned on any of these, also, to take the load off the shoulders, a lot of these uh, uh, packs, rucksacks, have chest straps. If you have it, sometimes it gets in the way if you got to shuck it off, but, man, if you have time, it puts some of the weight on your, your chest muscle and will take some of the burden off of a little bit off your shoulders. Uh, this does have, um, let's see, pardon me. It has a fairly generous internal pouch. I have some game bags in there. I think I have another skinny knife. I don't like to sharpen knives in the field, although I will, but if it's down to uh, the time factor, I think I have a life straw there. Uh, as you can tell, I have it still set up for elk hunting. Uh, also, on the waistband, or the, the waistband has two pouches where you can put small items such as something to snack on. I uh, have a couple of the military. The heat tabs start fire. Some extra ammunition in there. But, uh, great pack. These things will cost a pretty penny, but you pay for quality, and I think that's true across the board. Uh, this is about a mid sized pack. Uh, one of the other features that uh, I really do like is the uh, be able to use it as a pack frame for packing down elk. What I do is attach or detach the main straps, try to compress the main compartment, and what I'll do then is uh, strap the quarter into here. Uh, I also like on the side, on either side they have uh, a container for water bottles. You don't want to use a hydration bladder, and I have on each side, I, I've done that on occasion, and I have a 550 cord there where I've used to tie off the dummy cord, the uh, water bottles. Uh, dedicated hunting pack. 
this is the only Everly stock product that I own, but uh, wholeheartedly recommend it if I needed another heavy duty backpack. Would not hesitate. There's a little compartment in there as well. Would not hesitate to use it. I've used this for six or seven elk seasons. Love it. This is the only Everly stock pack that I bought, uh, but I've been super impressed with the product, so would not hesitate to buy another. Uh, like I said, this was bought, dedicated for elk hunting, and it has worked great for it, and I've used it for five, six, seven seasons. Uh, one of the other features that I really do like is the uh, be able to use it as a pack frame for packing down elk. What I do is attach or detach the main straps, try to compress the main compartment, and what I'll do then is uh, strap the quarter into here. Uh, I also like on the side, on either side they have uh, a container for water bottles. You don't want to use a hydration bladder, and I have on each side, I, I've done that on occasion, and I have a 550 cord there where I've used to tie off the dummy cord, the uh, water bottles. Uh, dedicated hunting pack. This is the only Everly stock product that I own, but uh, wholeheartedly recommend it if I needed another heavy duty backpack. Would not hesitate. There's a little compartment in there as well. Would not hesitate to use it. I've used this for six or seven elk seasons. Love it. Uh, next up is Oakley Day Pack. Uh, this is basically bought for if you're doing something that you want to do. Maybe you're traveling and uh, you don't want to give the appearance that uh, you want something that looks more, more civilian. Uh, these are an okay product. Uh, one thing I will say, use them one time with a team on a deployment. Uh, we unexpectedly went to an island in the Caribbean to provide security after hurricane. Uh, really, we're not anticipating that. Uh, some guys I was working with also had these issued to me as well. I, I actually used my Eagle case, my Eagle three-day pack, uh, three-day assault pack on that. And uh, at least, you know, uh, one team member, uh, he, it, it destroyed it, it ripped. And now granted, it was probably carrying a much heavier load and designed for something it really wasn't. Uh, it was it was being used for something it wasn't designed for, but it failed miserably. So you know, light use, yeah. I've used this, uh, you know, to go overseas, light travel. It, it stands out okay. Uh, it stands up okay for light use, but like I said, super heavy use, you're gonna destroy these things. Um, low profile, not bad. Um, you know, it has large main compartment, uh, decent sized main, main compartment. Light use, like I said, it's it, it does have some mesh compartments in here if you need something that has to be dried, or is a little bit damp, has some side pockets. It works well enough for for what it is, but really, um, you, can, you, you can hang a hydra hydration bladder in here off of this thing. I've never used in that capacity. Haven't used it, traveled with this a little bit, and light use is fine. But, you know, Oakley, love their eyewear, love their hand, their gloves, their tactical gloves. Uh, this, it's okay, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Next up is a light pack with a hydration bladder that comes with it, uh, made by, you guessed it, Eagle Industries. Um, I won this particular pack at a shooting school uh, they had a raffle and I won the prize it wasn't skill it was just luck which is pretty much the story of my life um, but uh, nice little pack uh, it is made with, with basically just a small pack to use in conjunction with uh, a hydration bladder this came with the hydration bladder it's uh, not a camelback it is in fact an eagle hydration bladder I don't know whether they subcontracted to uh, camelback or not or another manufacturer but it works very well i've used it a lot it has just a couple pouches has three pouches has very small pouches has all kinds of external strap and molly straps on it uh, you know you could put maybe a couple power bars or rain jacket in your water maybe a few other odds and ends and uh, that's 
you know, what it's used for. The straps are not particularly great. It's not made for heavy duty use, it's light use. Um, currently what I use this for, uh, as I've gotten older, I've started to bicycle more for my aerobic exercise and run less. And I use this for my hydration bladder. I put a few things in here, a phone, a couple of other items, maybe on a longer one, the par bar or something, like I said. And uh, for what it is, it works great. A little drag strap, um, very light use. Uh, like I said, the stitching, this is when Eagle was, they, before they moved their manufacturers offshore. Uh, these things were about uh, 60, 70 bucks. When this first came out, it was one of the first of its kind. Uh, there's since been a lot more of these. There's all kinds of knockoffs. You know, if you can find a quality manufacturer of this style for a uh, simple thing, day use, they're great. So, um, this style, once again, avoid the really cheap ones with the bad stitching. It has a big compression pouch. If you can stuff the pockets and cinch it down, really have been pretty happy with this so you know whether it's this style that's made by a quality manufacturer like it for light use absolutely yeah get something like it if you're outside a lot or outdoorsy here we have another low alpine or alpine product of all the rucksacks backpacks that i have i've used this one the least because i've had it the least amount of time so during the pandemic during night or 2020 i like many other people spent way too much time at home and way too much online and probably way too much time on ebay and i found this particular pack on ebay it uh is like i said it's low manufacturer and uh it was 60 bucks and this is basically somewhat equivalent to like the Becker Patrol Pack. It's a medium-sized ruck. It's not really a day pack. It could be used as large for a day pack. Really not a heavy, heavy ruck. It does not have an internal frame, but uh, it looked cool, and I wanted it, so I've got it. I've used it a couple times. Uh, once again, the stitching, the quality of manufacture of the products is great. Uh, I did go on just a six-mile hike with a little weight on it, like 35 pounds, just to see how it would do did well sit up well the pockets on this thing the detachable or the side pockets are detachable and they have a little strap <coughs> excuse me on them so if uh, in fact you wanted to uh fill this up or needed a pouch or something of that nature you could you could uh, use it for that I, I like that uh this i'm not sure i know low they're still they make a bunch of civilian stuff but i think they still make a things for the Irish Army, and I think for the Danish Army as well. Um, this very well may be surplus from them, but it was in great shape, uh, and it was a steal for 60 bucks. has a pretty fair main compartment. And uh, not a more modern design. For what it is, it is probably still rather um, heavy. Uh, instead of one or two uh, cinching pouch for the main compartment has one has a little mat flap it has a drag or recovery strap put in nice padded uh, shoulder shoulder pads shoulder straps and uh, kind of a lightweight waist or weight band wouldn't carry a whole lot of weight in it like I said I did a six mile ruck with 35 pounds it was just fine but uh, I'd probably max it out at maybe 50, 50 pounds. And that might even be a little bit heavy. That would actually be very heavy for this. So don't have that much experience with it, but uh, if you like the low stuff and the cool factor and uh, the DPM style disruptive pattern military that the Brits and some of the European countries. So, you know, kind of thought maybe I'll change this over to my go bag. Don't really know yet. One thing I do not like about it is this does not have a dedicated hydration pouch, which isn't that big of a deal, but if, if it's a choice between having one and not having one, I'll take it. Uh, for what it is, high cool factor, haven't used it a lot yet. I like it. For what I've used it for, it's been great, but it haven't used it a great deal. So, anyway, I hope I haven't bored anybody to tears. If not, you've probably punched out by now. Uh, that is my take 
on rucksacks. Uh, one thing I do want to add, what do you not see here? You don't see Kafaru, Mystery Ranch, Gray Man, some of those. Uh, one thing I will say, so I'm talking with some of the younger guys, is the name Mystery Ranch comes up again and again. I've never owned any of their, well, I, I take that back. I do have one of their bags, just a, a travel bag that I like. But Mystery Ranch is the reputation that they have. And for the other, uh, the younger guys in Army SF that I've talked to, uh, that was the hotness. That was one of the hotness, and some people really liked it. Of course, I have SF friends that really like Faru stuff as well. Um, once again, people have their own uh, particular likes and dislikes. But I do hear Mystery Ranch as far as lightweight and very durable. But for that, you're going to pay a price. So, you know, I, I guess my throw into the modern era is the Eberly stock. I like that. Uh, there's a lot of things out there, folks. So it depends upon, um, you know, what your needs are. If you want a dedicated tactical pack, get a dedicated tactical pack. If you want a dedicated hunting pack, get a dedicated hunting pack. If you go from some of the high brow manufacturers, you're, you're going to spend some money. But, you know, and at the end, you generally get for your pay, you, you pay for. There's some values out there. And as always, it's a trade-off. But... I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. This is Old Soldier, out.